Once dismissed as mere frivolity, the Beverly Hillbillies became an unexpected source of solace, providing audiences with laughter during the transformative eras of the 60s and 70s. The downright charming saga of a bunch of hill folks trying to figure out their newfound riches and a whole new fangled setting stole our hearts. The fellas and gals who breathed life into these characters did it with pure genuineness. Unfortunately, the main crew from the Beverly Hillbillies has moved on to the big barn in the sky. Max Bear Jr., the fella who brought Jethro Bodine to life. As the only surviving member of the Beverly Hillbillies, Max has recently attracted more media attention than usual. If you are curious about his life, then this video is for you. Maximilian Adelbert Bear Jr.'s journey from his early years in California to his entry into the world of Hollywood is a tale marked by diverse interests and unexpected turns. Born on December 4, 1937, in Oakland, California, Max Bear Jr. was destined to be the son of Max Sr., a celebrated boxing champion, and Mary, a homemaker. Growing up in the vibrant atmosphere of California, Bear found himself drawn to the allure of Hollywood, especially during the golden age of television. Bear's formative years were filled with a passion for sports. While attending Christian Brothers High School, he engaged in four different sports, showcasing his athletic prowess. Notably, he secured the junior title twice at the Sacramento Open Golf Tournament, indicating his versatility beyond the boxing ring. This eerily exposure to various disciplines laid the foundation for his later endeavors. Upon graduating from high school, Bayer continued his academic journey at Santa Clara University. In a surprising twist, he chose a major in business and a minor in philosophy, displaying an intellectual depth not often associated with individuals pursuing careers in entertainment. This eclectic set of interests showcased Bayer's determination to explore diverse fields. After completing his university education, Bayer embarked on a new chapter in his life, entering the world of acting. His debut in Hollywood began with three distinct roles in separate episodes of the Western TV series Maverick. These episodes, all released in 1960 when Bayer was just 23 years old, marked the beginning of his acting career. Before stepping into the iconic role of Jethro Bodine on The Beverly Hill Billies, Max Bear Jr. faced a challenging period in his life, grappling with financial difficulties and the harsh realities of being a struggling artist. In stark contrast to the later success he achieved, Bear Jr. experienced a phase of destitution that tested his resilience. At the time, he was not the renowned Jethro, but rather a broke and jobless individual, living day to day and relying on unemployment checks to survive. In a candid 1963 interview with The Record, Bayer Jr. revealed the extent of his struggles. He recounted having just one quart of milk to sustain him over four days, illustrating the severity of his financial constraints. I was two months behind on my rent, and my weight had dropped from 210 to 188 pounds, Bayer Jr. disclosed. My morale was low, very low. The dire circumstances pushed him to the brink, facing the challenge of making ends meet while dealing with the emotional toll of his situation. During this challenging period, Bear Jr. was forced to sell some of his possessions to make ends meet. He had no car and lacked a proper wardrobe, making everyday life a constant struggle. Despite being the son of the famous heavyweight boxing champion Max Bear, Bear Jr. chose a different path, opting for a career in acting instead of following in his father's footsteps in the world of boxing. Max Bear Jr.'s journey to Hollywood and his eventual role as Jethro Bodine in The Beverly Hillbillies was a testament to his unwavering passion for acting, overcoming initial hardships, and eventually finding success in the entertainment industry. Bear Jr.'s introduction to acting occurred during his college years, particularly when he performed in his first play, The Male Animal. This experience ignited a passion within him, prompting him to move to Hollywood after graduating with a desire to pursue his dreams in acting. However, the pursuit of his dream was far from easy. In the early days, before landing the breakthrough role of Jethro, 
Bayer Jr., faced financial challenges that manifested in a diet consisting mainly of canned beans. This period of hardship mirrored the humble beginnings of his character Jethro and served as a poignant reminder of the determination required to succeed in Hollywood. Reflecting on the tough times, Bear Jr. expressed resilience, stating, I'd had some raw deals in this town, and I don't forget the people who tried to take advantage of me. But you can bet your life I'll never be that poor again. This determination fueled his drive to overcome obstacles and build a successful career in the entertainment industry. Despite the initial struggles, Max Bayer Jr. achieved lasting fame through his portrayal of Jethro, a character he played from 1962 to 1971. The casting process for the role was competitive, with dozens of actors auditioning. However, Bayer Jr. stood out as the creator Paul Henning's pick for the character, solidifying his place in television history. In preparation for the role, Bear Jr. faced the challenge of developing a southern accent, as the character of Jethro hailed from the rural south. Despite being a California native, Bear Jr. committed himself to learning the accent by studying established actors. He delved into albums by Andy Griffith and Jonathan Winters, listening for hours to refine his portrayal. The result was a country southern accent that, while not necessarily authentic to any specific region, became an integral part of Jethro's character. The Beverly Hillbillies not only catapulted Max Bear Jr. into the limelight, but also reshaped the trajectory of his life, opening numerous doors and transforming him into a prominent figure in one of TV's highest-rated series. The role of Jethro became a pivotal point in Bayer Jr.'s career, and the success of the show had a profound impact on his professional and personal journey. Acknowledging the significance of landing the role, Bear Jr. maintained a grounded perspective, recognizing that he wasn't the only struggling actor at the time. Despite the challenges of the entertainment industry, he considered himself fortunate to have secured the part of Jethro at the right moment. In a candid reflection on the struggles faced by fellow actors, he pointed to the example of Vince Edwards, who endured a six-year wait before finding success in Ben Casey. Bear Jr. empathized with the difficulties faced by others in the industry, emphasizing that his own year-long wait for a breakthrough was, in comparison, a relatively short period. I know kids who have had it so much harder than I have, Bear Jr. remarked, but my year's wait was a long time. This acknowledgement of the challenges faced by aspiring actors highlighted Bear Jr.'s humility and gratitude for the opportunities that came his way. Expressing gratitude for the timing of his success, Bear Jr. recognized the pivotal role that the Beverly Hillbillies played in his life. The show not only lifted him from the struggles of a starving artist, but also positioned him as a key player in the television industry. Bear Jr. acknowledged the transformative power of being part of a hit show, stating, I was fortunate to get in a hit show. Otherwise, I might still be starving. This sentiment encapsulates the profound impact that a single opportunity, in the form of the role of Jethro, had on Max Bear Jr.'s career and life. While Jethro was the character that made Max Bear Jr. famous, he didn't limit himself to one type of role. In addition to his comedic portrayal of Jethro, Bayer took on diverse characters, notably featuring in westerns during this period. One notable achievement was his prominent role in the 1967 western film A Time for Killing, demonstrating his ability to navigate various genres. The impact of Jethro on Bayer's life extended beyond the screen. Such was the authenticity and charm he brought to the character that even his closest friends began affectionately referring to him as Jethro instead of Max. While some actors might have struggled with such typecasting, Bayer embraced it, recognizing the doors it opened and the consistent stream of work that followed. Despite the consistent work Max Bayer Jr. enjoyed, he found himself grappling with the challenges of typecasting. For a section of the audience and key industry players, 
Bear became inseparable from the comedic character he portrayed. This typecasting, while bringing fame, came at the cost of limiting his opportunities as a serious actor. Bear, with a desire to explore a variety of roles, occasionally regretted being pigeonholed into the role of Jethro. The fear of being perceived solely as Jethro haunted Bear even after the Beverly Hillbillies concluded. He worried that the humorous portrayal of Jethro's perceived stupidity might overshadow his abilities as a serious actor, potentially hindering opportunities for more complex roles in both TV and film. As the series ended, Bear's concerns materialized, serious roles became scarce, and his acting career experienced a downturn. Post, The Beverly Hillbillies, Max Baird Jr. took on two notable film roles in Macon County Line and The Wild McCulloughs. Notably, he assumed the role of producer and writer for Macon County Line, showcasing his multifaceted talents behind the camera. However, the scarcity of acting opportunities led him to shift his focus away from being in front of the camera. In the 1980s, Bear made brief appearances in two episodes of Max Houston. His final acting role occurred in 1991 with his second episode of Murder, She Wrote. Following this, Bayer chose to step back from acting altogether, signaling the end of an era for his on-screen career. Despite the occasional longing from die-hard fans for his return to acting, Bayer made it clear that he had retired, showing no inclination to re-enter the world of television and film. Instead, he directed his energy toward entrepreneurship, leaving behind the world of entertainment. While he hasn't engaged in acting, writing, or directing in the years that followed, Bear has maintained a connection to his roots, particularly cherishing the memories created during the Beverly Hillbillies. Max Bear Jr.'s acting career may have been relatively short-lived, with only 22 films and TV shows to his name but his legacy is enduring. The indelible mark left by his portrayal of Jethro Clampett in American sitcom history ensures that he remains unforgettable. Despite the challenges of typecasting, Bear embraced his iconic role, learned to love it, and eventually found ways to capitalize on the enduring popularity of Jethro. In reflection, he expresses no regrets acknowledging that he has had a wonderful life since those early acting days. Max Bear Jr.'s personal life has seen its share of joys and sorrows. He was married once to Joanne Kathleen Hill, and their union lasted from 1966 to 1971. Following his marriage, Bear entered into a long-term live-in relationship with Cherry Rhodes. Unfortunately, their relationship took a tragic turn that would have a profound impact on Bayer's life. In a heartbreaking incident, upon returning home one day, Max Bayer Jr. discovered Cherry Rhodes on the floor, having taken her own life with a semi-automatic handgun. The gravity of this traumatic event was amplified by the discovery of a handwritten suicide note next to her. The tragedy thrust Bear into the harsh spotlight of the tabloid press as they delved into the details of his private life during this difficult time. Reports suggest that Bear and Rhodes were experiencing relationship issues at the time of her death. The specifics of these challenges and whether they were on the brink of ending their relationship remain unclear. Max Bear Jr. has chosen to keep the details of this tragic incident private, rarely discussing it in public. Since that difficult period, Max Bear Jr. has remained single, navigating the complexities of life without a romantic partner. Despite the personal challenges, he continues to maintain connections with friends, regularly meeting them and occasionally making public appearances. Notably, Bear shared a particularly close friendship with Buddy Ebsen who portrayed his on-screen cousin, Jed Clampett, in The Beverly Hillbillies. Following his departure from acting, Max Bear Jr. demonstrated remarkable resilience and entrepreneurial spirit, leveraging his university studies in business to embark on a new chapter in his career. In 1985, Max Bear Jr. 
driven by entrepreneurial vision, embarked on a venture that would intersect two worlds, the iconic realm of television and the allure of the gambling industry. This venture was inspired by his observation of the success of the Ponderosa Ranch in Incline Village, Nevada, a location famed for filming exterior scenes for the TV series Bonanza. Tourists flocked to the ranch, paying a substantial admission fee to experience the Bonanza connection through attractions like the cattle ranch, barns, displays, restaurants, hay rides, and even a wedding chapel. Drawing parallels between the success of the Ponderosa and the potential appeal of the Beverly Hillbillies, Bayer saw an opportunity to capitalize on the show's popularity in the gambling and hotel industry. Leveraging his role as Jethro Bodine, he turned this marketing opportunity into a strategic business move. Bayer, recognizing the value of the Beverly Hillbillies brand, began exploring ways to bring the show's charm to a new audience. In 1991, after negotiating with CBS, Bayer successfully obtained sublicensing rights to the Beverly Hillbillies, including food and beverage rights. The development and implementation of these ideas reportedly cost around $1 million, showcasing Bayer's commitment to turning his vision into reality. This move marked a significant expansion beyond the world of acting for Bayer, demonstrating his acumen for business and entertainment synergy. One notable outcome of this venture was the creation of Beverly Hillbillies-themed slot machines. In 1999, 65 of these machines were built and strategically placed in 10 different casinos, capitalizing on the enduring popularity of the show. The incorporation of the Beverly Hillbillies into the realm of gambling not only showcased Bear's innovative approach, but also demonstrated the enduring appeal of the beloved TV series. In a bold move to extend the legacy of the Beverly Hillbillies brand, Max Bear Jr. undertook an ambitious project in late 2003, the redevelopment of a former Walmart location in Carson City, into a Beverly Hill Billy's themed hotel and casino. This venture aimed to capitalize on the enduring popularity of the iconic TV series, creating a unique destination for fans and tourists. However, the project faced significant challenges, including building code conflicts and opposition from other developers in the neighboring properties, ultimately leading to its downfall. Despite the setbacks, Bear did not abandon his vision. On May 4, 2007, he announced the sale of the problematic property and the acquisition of a new parcel just outside Carson City, situated in neighboring Douglas County. This strategic relocation was driven by the anticipation of encountering fewer obstacles in this new location. Bayer secured a 2.5-acre parcel in North Douglas County for $1.2 million dollars, with plans to acquire an additional 20 acres once he obtained the required zoning variances. The envisioned project was nothing short of grand, featuring a 40,000-square-foot gambling area, boasting 800 slot machines and 16 tables. The entertainment complex was designed to include various eateries, with a standout offering being Jethro's All You Can, a buffet. This culinary attraction would playfully nod to the beloved character Jethro Bodine, adding a whimsical touch to the overall theme. The expansive project also included plans for a showroom, cinema complex, and the centerpiece, a 240-room, five-story hotel. This multifaceted development aimed not only to capture the essence of the Beverly Hillbillies, but also to provide a comprehensive entertainment experience for visitors. Max Baer Jr.'s ambitious plans for Jethro's Casino were nothing short of extravagant. The envisioned casino aimed to stand out with a 200-foot-tall mock oil derrick, symbolizing the show's oil-rich theme, complete with a dramatic touch, an impressive 20- to 30-foot flame that would capture the attention of visitors. However, as of July 2012, the development of Jethro's Casino hit a significant roadblock. Ongoing litigation involving Max Bayer Jr., the developer, and Douglas County led to the suspension of the project. The legal challenges and disputes delayed the development indefinitely, 
leaving the fate of the envisioned casino in limbo. In 2014, another chapter unfolded in Bayer's legal battles, this time involving a lawsuit against CBS. Bayer claimed that a secret deal between CBS and a Des Moines-based Jethro's BBQ was interfering with his ability to capitalize on his iconic role from the Beverly Hillbillies. The lawsuit alleged that Bayer had negotiated a deal with CBS for the rights to use the fictional character and other motifs from the show to create a chain of restaurants, hotels, and casinos. This legal dispute shed light on the complexities of intellectual property rights and the challenges faced by actors seeking to leverage their iconic roles for business ventures. In 2015, the passing of Donna Douglas, with whom Max Baer Jr. had maintained a connection, left him as the last surviving member of the original Beverly Hillbillies cast. Despite the challenges Jethro posed to his acting ambitions and the difficulty of securing serious roles, Baer remained undeterred in his approach to life. One of the highlights of his post-acting career was the film Macon County Line, which he wrote, produced, and acted in. Notably, it became the highest-grossing film in America at the time, showcasing Bayer's multifaceted talents and his ability to achieve success behind and in front of the camera. He continued to expand his experience in filmmaking and focused on honing his craft. While he gradually withdrew from the entertainment spotlight, Max Bayer Jr. still makes occasional public appearances, maintaining a connection with his audience. His appearance in a documentary about Buddy Ebsen, following the latter's death, attests to the enduring bond he shared with his fellow cast members. Now, Max Baer Jr. boasts an impressive net worth of $50 million. Today, at 85 years old, Baer Jr. leads a serene and comfortable life, residing in his northern Nevada home that offers breathtaking views of Lake Tahoe. In a recent interview with Las Vegas real estate at his lakeside abode, Bayer Jr. shared insights into his real estate ventures, including a property in Las Vegas that has been in his ownership since 1975. Adding to his real estate portfolio, Bayer Jr. acquired another house in the Pueblo, Las Vegas in 1999. When questioned about the allure of his Pueblo home, he highlighted several factors including its proximity to social and cultural hubs, a convenient location near the Strip, and practical amenities like grocery stores and pharmacies. One notable architectural feature that captured Bayer Jr.'s appreciation was the addition of 27 French doors. Expressing his fondness for French doors, Bayer Jr. clarified that it wasn't merely because they hailed from France, but rather his appreciation for the idea of doors opening together, seamlessly blending the outdoor and indoor spaces. This preference for French doors reflects his attention to architectural detail and the desire for a living space that exudes openness and connectivity with the surroundings. At 85 years old, Max Baer Jr. enjoys the fruits of a blessed life. Overcoming various challenges throughout his journey, he now relishes the comfort and tranquility provided by two distinctive homes, each characterized by spacious layouts and impressive architecture. The interview and Bayer Jr.'s reflections on his real estate choices offer a glimpse into the actor's appreciation for not only the aesthetic elements of his homes, but also the practical aspects that contribute to a fulfilling and contented lifestyle in his golden years. What do you think about Max Bayer Jr.'s life? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.